so uh, welcome to the ci.fmf uh, talk. Uh, what, it, what it is about, uh, like the main goal is to make the life uh, of, um, of the developer uh, <clears throat> in the point of view uh, to enable tests uh, more easier. Uh, as easy as, as possible, and also to um, enable open sourcing, open, so open sourcing tests, uh, very very simple. So, uh, a, bit, a bit of words about the agenda. After a short introduction, I, I will give um, some short info about uh, the FMF format, about level one and level two metadata. Uh, then we'll give a couple of real life examples and then show a, show a demo about uh, how this could be working in the future. We have a, a simple proof of concept working there. Yes, <laughs> so the introduction, who we are, uh, that's the slide. So uh, my name is Petr Šprichal, I'm from the OSCI team. Uh, this is Mirovat Kerti, uh, also from OSCI and also testing farm team. And uh, uh, then we have uh, Franta Šumšal, who is from the Plumbers team and uh, works on system D testing. Uh, let's start with the motivation. So um, there is a feedback, a repeated feedback, that uh, if you want to enable tests in CI, it's uh, kind, of, kind of awkward, uh, complicated. There are multiple files in multiple locations with different extensions and names that needs to be created to enable tests. Uh, the gating, for example, is, is a completely separate file from the, how you enable tests uh, test themselves. Also, we internally keep um, metadata which are necessary for test execution, and they are stored in different uh, places and scattered across, across the place, so it's very hard to take them and open source them to, to make the testing as early as possible. So what we are looking for is to have, like, the very simple common use cases, super simple. You just place one file with a couple of lines, everything is already en enabled. We want to have a consistent way of storing all test execution metadata. And this should also allow us to uh, easier open source tests and run them earlier. Uh, the format should be concise, easily re readable, and also flexible and extensible for, for future. So a uh, bit of words. Uh, about FMF, so what is this uh, flexible metadata format? This is something uh, which we were looking for for, for some time, and uh, this is the answer for uh, our uh, question: How to efficiently store uh, all test uh, execution-related uh, metadata somehow in, in a sensible way? And uh, we found it uh, that the, the FMF could be the answer. Uh, it allows us to save everything in Git. It's nicely in plain text, uh, plain text format there, versioned under, under version control. Basically, it's, uh, it's based on YAML, so the, the cons concise human and machine readable, readable format, and it adds a couple of, uh, couple of nice features, like hierarchy, inheritance, and elasticity, and I will speak about them now. Uh, it's available in Fedora, Copper, and PIP, so you can directly, directly uh, install it and start to experiment with that. So the features, uh, simple use case, as simple as possible. As you see, summary, contact, tags, uh, how to run the test, duration, everything very simple, and it could be for, for, for a simple uh, single test like this. Um, then the hierarchy. Uh, there is a virtual hierarchy support, so you can, uh, um, in a single file, if you have like five tests and you, you don't want to create five, uh, five files with this information and metadata for the test, you create a single file and you put the virtu virtual hierarchy there and save everything, everything in it in a single, <clears throat> in a single file. Uh, then inheritance. Uh, it quite often happens that you have a bunch of tests and the contact person for those tests or the duration or the requirements or the component which is relevant is common for all of them. So while like repeating and duplicating this information, you can say like this, this is the common information, this, this should be inherited. So the previous slide, as it was like this, you can write like this, you have the common parts at the start and the objects which are under this hierarchy. Uh, inherit uh, of these options. This also al allows you to create uh, something we call virtual test cases. So ha you have one implementation, one shell script, uh, and then you uh, 
run a short version, a SAT run test, for example, very quick, can be like part of the gating, and you could do some like deeper, deeper test, which then you can run uh, outside of the gating, but uh, you can still like see the results and make sure it passed. Elasticity, just a couple of words, like <clears throat> from the start, you usually like start with a couple of lines and a couple of tests, but as the time goes, uh, you run into like it, and the file grows and it becomes becomes hard to maintain. So uh, FMF allows you, to, uh, if you need, you separate those information into different directories or files and have it nicely structured in under the file file structure. So if you uh, want to try, just DNF install, pip install or take it from the GitHub and start experimenting. The package it itself contains a couple of examples, so you can just uh, go to the directory and start to experiment with that. It has uh, CLI, so like quite intuitive subcommands, I would say. FMF LS will list all the objects which are present in the directory where you currently are. You can uh, filter objects which are you interested in. You can say like, uh, just show me all all test cases which are stored there, or you can you can <clears throat> do some uh, filtering based on tags or, I don't know, runtime, relevant component as such. But I, I will not dive into that. And also, there is a Python module, so if you want to, like, extend your application to have the support for, for this met kind of metadata, you can just, like, read the metadata tree using fmf.3, climb the whole tree, and filter all, only those objects which you are interested in. So that was a little bit about FMF, and then level one metadata. Uh, so when we were uh, thinking about this, uh, and after some time of discussions, we uh, ended up in uh, this like separation of level one metadata and level two metadata. The Elliot now we call those uh, those data which are necessary for test executions and which are. Uh, closely related to indi individual test cases, uh, usually you would place this information very, or you would want to place this information as close to the test code or the source code even as closely as possible. So uh, in Fedora CI slash, uh, <coughs> slash metadata project on, on Pegure, we have uh, proposed or defined for now a couple of attributes uh, for this like summary description, contact, test path, environment, you've seen some of those in the examples. And for each of them, we have like a nice, like short description, motivation, user stories, examples, so that it's clear for what this attribute should be, should be used. Now, uh, how it was before. So internally, we have a kind of metadata uh, for running beakerly tests in make files. It looks like this and started like that like 10 years ago, and we still keep in creating these files when creating new, new tests, and uh, I think this does not deserve any more command. <clears throat> any more command. Uh, another file, purpose, where you would place like some more detailed description of the test. Then another bunch of metadata we have in our test case management system which some of the data are duplicated, some there are some additional data, and there are some fields which we were missing, so we invented something like structured field because it was not possible to add attribute to the, to the tool, so we invented like this workaround. So you see like four places where you keep information about the test case. How it could look like? Single one. As you see, key, value, uh, some extensions, of course, the support for, for inheritance, as I mentioned before. So, uh, in fact, like this, this example could probably would look like, like this because the rest of the data are shared in the components, so you would not want to repeat that uh, again and again. So, that would be about level one. And level two, what is level two metadata? These are metadata, uh, additional information for execution of one or more test cases, and uh, it says, uh, things like how the environment for testing should be prepared, which set of test cases is relevant for gating, which is not relevant for gating, uh, and which frameworks should be used, and uh, some, some stuff like that. Similar as the previous L1, this is defined in the Federacia Metadata Pegur project, L2, so you will find some uh, details there. A couple of uh, words about the concept. So, artifact, as uh, the thing you are going to test, 
and we would like to define or enable users to say that like for a pull request I would like to run these tests, for build I would like to run these tests and when there is update maybe it contains multiple uh, packages. Uh, for, for that case I would like to run a different set of tests. I think in the previous presentation there was a question about like if it would be possible like if there is update and the side tag like multiple packages. So this, this could be one, one of the options that you say like for the when it, when it is update there are multiple packages you can, you can do a different type of testing some integration testing like that. Um, well uh, a test set is uh, basically something like a group of tests. It can have like summary and uh, then uh, the definition here, here you see like the structure. So the, for the pull request artifact, you have one test set called pep, like uh, check, check the pep eight, there, then some linting for the build. When the build is built, you, can, you could run a smoke test, which for example, run, runs fast and you would enable it in a gating and some features, feature tests, which can maybe take a long time and you would not e enable that in gating. So the test steps. Uh, <clears throat> so there's the idea to separate um, the steps in the configuration so that it's possible to select uh, those steps which you are interested in. We have like user stories. Uh, I, as a developer, I would like to um, check my component repo and see what tests will be run. But um, it's not possible. There's the YAML uh, playbook and other playbooks and uh, I don't know. And if I run, run it, it takes an hour and I don't find it. So you would say, uh, just run the discover step and show me the tests. You, you, you get the tests. Or uh, another thing, um, for example, you, could, you would like to do a quick uh, testing on your local host. So you would say, um, skip the provisioning part, skip the prepare part, just do the execute uh, or discover execute. <clears throat> and each of the steps uh, could do, like could have multiple Im implementations there. So for the discover, um, to discover uh, is to detect what are the tests that should be run. Provisioning part, uh, prepare the machine for testing, take it from Beaker, from OpenStack, or uh, say like test in on my local machine. Prepare some additional steps for uh, like setting up the box, so installing packages, starting up services, things like that. Execute uh, the step for execution itself, then reporting maybe uh, for the future some, some possibilities to uh, set up the notification of or how the reporting should be done, where, where the messages should be sent, finishing for some cleanup tasks. So uh, before, or, or the current situation is that if you want to enable tests in, and enable them in gating. You create the test YAML file, and already here you see some like implementation details which are not that interesting for a developer, like hosts, local hosts. What does it mean? Uh, text, classic, the only possibility currently. And uh, so, and if you if you run into some like more complicated complex situations, the test YAML file could look uh, much more much more complicated. Uh, but that's how it is currently. Then uh, this was, yeah, uh, there was a request to be able to configure amount of RAM for, for, for the test. So we added as one of the proof of concept how FMF could be used. This, uh, this file provision FMF, which, uh, which, should, um, which can contain the information about the memory. But like as a, as a proof of concept, just uh, we didn't like put it into some uh, more, more thought. So there's this, uh, there's this syntax standard inventory QCOF why is it there like that and the M and so it's not very, it's not very intuitive. And for the gating ammo, yeah, copy and paste one, once or multiple times if you want to enable multiple gates and uh, it looks like this. And uh, here's our vision how this could look like in the future. So you would have provision, memory, three gigs, execute, um, that binary, which was the same, the same in the in the example with test YAML, and then you say like uh, this this test set uh, should be uh, enabled for the for the gate for push push to testing. Everything everything in one file. So uh, that's about the first part, and I will give over to Franta to to say something about the the examples. What? You'll do Apache as first. Apache. Okay. So the Apache one, uh, quite simple uh, example. Uh, 
let's say you have a component, you just want to run a set of shell commands. So you add the test set, and this is, this is the first line. You add the step, the execute step, and then like the implementation how is shell, and the list of commands, and that's it. In this way, you should be able to create a simple integration test, like install package, here's start the service, create web page, check that it runs. So these, these like, like, I don't know, seven, seven lines could be everything, uh, or even if you have like small test, minus, minus test something, it could be just like a, uh, something like four lines to, uh, to enable the test. I uh, maybe just, just that whole commands is basically assert on zero return code. Right. Yes. They, they so if one of these fails, basically it blows up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, actually, you would probably want something like this uh, to do like in the prepare, in the prepare step uh, to install the packages and uh, and then uh, uh, let let the framework install the the actual RPM which is which is to be tested instead of like uh, replacing it with the DNF commands or something like that. Systemd example. So in Red Hat in Systemd we managed to collect uh, hundreds of regression tests and for uh, many customer scenarios and so on. And usually these scenarios, they depend on upstream features which were backported into RHEL. And it actually kind of makes sense to run this test in upstream first to check if they are not broken by future updates. So I wanted to upstream the whole test to into, into the, uh, for example, Fedora, but I wasn't able to because many of the metadata are scattered around the internal infrastructure and the metadata are vital to run these tests. So even if I upstream the test to it, I couldn't run it, for example, in Fedora. So thanks to the FMF, we managed to move these metadata into the separate files which lies in the Git repository with the test it themselves. So this is just an example of tiny fraction of the test suite. We <clears throat> actually in, uh, collected the metadata for hardware requirements and dependencies and so on into the files. So everything is in the one Git repository and you don't have to hunt it around the infrastructure. So. This is the infrastructure of the test repo, and now this is the config in uh, the upstream repository or RHEL 8 repository, which basically there's the prepare phase, which uh, installs all the test uh, dependencies, which were usually in the make file, but the dependencies are actually uh, infrastructure uh, dependent, so you have depend uh, different dependencies per infrastructure, so it doesn't make sense to uh, have them in the test metadata themselves, because they don't know where they run. Uh, then we have the discover phase, which uh, allows you to filter the tests, uh, depends on the tier tags, distribution, and so on. And for the historical reasons, the system test is, is written in Bcolib, so you can tell it how to run the test suite. Uh, this is the most basic config, but uh, for, uh, for example, in RHEL, we do several waves of testing, which is called tiers, and basically for the tiers, the, the only thing, that we, uh, the only row which changes is the filter itself, so it, it wouldn't make sense to just copy over the whole, uh, every face again and again. So you can uh, write a common config which has all the common data in one place, and then uh, you can just overwrite specific uh, phases to contain different tier tags, different distro tags, and so on. So this should make the data duplication less common, I guess. And uh, thanks to the FMF and uh, the work which mirrored it, we managed to ex uh, run the internal test suite on Fedora, or at least the p part of the in the Fedora uh, part of the test suite in Fedora. So hopefully, in the following months, we will manage to upstream the whole test suite and uh, run it at least in Fedora and CentOS CI. Yeah, sorry for the quick presentation. Uh, our talk was shortened to 25 minutes instead of 50, so we need to be very quick. So let me show you how, how we managed to basically put uh, or running the test uh, on, on basically copper builds, uh, which Packet builds. And if you were in the previous presentation, uh, you saw that. So Packet, yeah, the tool, uh, which here was presented by the guys uh, to integrate upstream projects directly to Fedora. And part of it, Packet service basically builds copper builds, right? So they take those copper builds and want to run it on a real VM for those Fedora according to that copper route and report it back directly to GitHub. <clears throat> yeah, so packet service, so we have uh, 
uh, testing system. We'll provide this as a testing system, as a service, uh, but it's uh, not, not really here for announcement. I just say its name is called Testing Form. And basically, it provides a service which Packet uses to uh, contact us once the Cooper builds are built uh, to do this testing. And we, uh, after the testing is done, uh, we do that on a VM and we run on CentOS CI. OpenShift, we spin up there a VM, <coughs> install the packages according to, uh, according, or spin up the VM according to the copper root, right? So if you are building for three copper roots, uh, then you spin up <coughs> uh, three VMs and run the testing report back, uh, report back to Packet very shortly. Uh, yeah, so how does it look like? So this, for the simple shell executor, the one that uh, Petra was showing uh, here, so this very simple step, a uh, very simple shell test that basically runs for these commands and asserts each line. Uh, we have a uh, example packet configuration here, so this is how you actually configure packets to run those tests. Uh, uh, I think the copper build uh, job, I don't know if it was shown on the previous presentation, so that's how you say to packet that it should build copper builds. And basically after the copper builds are built and you add additional test jobs, uh, basically packet uh, instructs testing farm to run uh, uh, run the testing on these copper roots. And so here is a PR. And this is all packet staging, so we need to be done at the packet service, so it's not yet in production. We will work on that uh, in, in, the, in the next weeks uh, to get it done. But this is a simple pull request. This is just empty one. All the metadata is already stored, as I showed you, uh, that's already in the repository. And here are basically the checks. So you can see that <coughs> packet staging here built the RPM build successfully, and then uh, there have been three uh, different test sets being run on these three different Fedoras, 29, 30, and Rawhide. And if I go to the details tab <coughs> to testing farm console, uh, I could see yeah, the output of testing farm, which is, which is, we try to be very concise so is, there is no like middle layer between, so you know what is going on. Uh, so as you can see here, has been uh, installing the copper builds, uh, installing the copper builds uh, from, the, uh, from the copper root, uh, yeah, downloading. Uh, downloading the basically the, the tests uh, which are placed directly right in that repo. So we actually clone the, the, the PR and here at the end <coughs> at the end you can see basically the commands which have been run. So installing the, the, the stuff system the system satellite start HTTPD here, echo foo and this curl. Right? So this this will actually the test, right? And after this is done we contact back packet uh, or set it to the REST API the results. It's very simple. Um, for the for the system D, very similarly, so this it, it is the FMF test that Franta was showing. <coughs> Packet demo, completely the same, no magic there. Um, and here we mocked actually the results, so they fail. Um, so you get an idea how it would look like if, if it fails, and if it fails even for the testing infrastructure. So uh, yeah, here only one test is being run, uh, which actually failed, and you can go again to the console to uh, inspect, and go to, again to the artifacts to inspect the test uh, output. And here is actually an infrastructure, uh, infrastructure error, so we are trying to be concise here and return some reasonable error out uh, that, as you can see, error in starting copper build, what could that mean? So you can go back <coughs> to testing forms console and basically investigate. Uh, so yeah, the, here is uh, well actually the packet um, copper is enabled. Uh, here where it is installed and here at the end, I will find that this pull request builds actually an older build of system D, so it's like it conflicts with the new one that we are testing on already. So uh, yeah, most probably you need to rebase the pull request and to the latest, uh, latest sources. Um, yep. That's very shortly it. Um, so one very important thing, of course, like you want being testing farms like the, the, the test system that does this to be available to users, right? So we will expose this as one one tool that will basically use a container. So you don't need to install a myriad of, ten, of, of hundreds of packages, but we'll provide this as a container. So here you can run this command already, and this will run uh, the uh, basically the hello world. Hello world. Um, um, uh, test there, that was the first one, which is the HTTPD, and you can execute this on your local host and it will do basically the same thing as, as I showed you on production instance, which reports to packet. Uh, yeah, and we'll, you won't be running Docker here, uh, we'll make it, make it um, available as a tool, uh, so we don't need to specify some things, and of course if it's a container, there will need to be some additional magic uh, once the tool um, will be more mature. 
Uh, currently, need to landing in privilege because we run VM in the container. Of course, like uh, that's that's how it is. If you want to, to reproduce the stuff, you will need to run uh, the in privilege mode. And Podman unfortunately doesn't work because there is a bug opened, and I think it's not yet released uh, to be able to do this here yeah, because it needs the AVK VM in the in the container. Uh, yeah, and the second example that doesn't work because I broke it, but uh, this would actually run the tests uh, that are placed in your uh, local directory. So you, basically, if you won't just create tests, you just add it to, you just create them, and with some, one simple command, you will be able to run them and execute them. So that's where we are getting. Yeah, more announcement about testing farm. It, it, it will be coming. Uh, yeah, we don't have yet. We don't have yet the announcement, so I, I'm just mentioning it here. Yeah. So how, do, how does it look to you? Does it make sense? On one? Was it was it much better? Much better? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. You don't. Yeah. So like, uh, like you don't want like. Of course, like uh, we can run test, for example, in Podman. So, for if you will be using directly Podman container where you run the test, you don't want need root. But if you will want to run it on a full-fledged VM, you need some access, right? And if, uh, the Docker command is actually not exact, not run as root, but yeah, it, it runs as root. Uh, if. Yeah, of course, like we can support that. We already actually that tool supports connecting to an existing instance, but then it expects that you provision it into some, some certain way because you need to connect it to it somehow. Or you supply all the information, like the, the key and everything, of course. But like that's supportable, definitely. And yes? So you don't, I need to. So cool, we can drop it. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. like to have, uh, and that was the intention, like to have the, the framework open source and, and free and so that it could be use, uh, used uh, at different different places and for testing different distros. So I think like uh, if it would be possible, ideally we would have like uh, the very the very identical way of how to enable tests and these test tests and, and gating <coughs> in, in Fedora and in RHEL as well. Uh, plus if I understand correctly, um, uh, we have also like uh, an, an RFE for FMF to be able to have some like default configuration in a metadata tree and then have, have somewhere, for example, downstream, uh, another uh, FMF tree, which you would just merge with the upstream. So you would say like everything from the configuration in Fedora is copied or inherited and you just override some internal information. So you would have st still have all, almost like just a single source of truth. Yes, the idea is that you have just a single configuration, you reference the other one, which should be inherited, and then you have like just a single single line uh, with the internal change, for example.
Yeah, yeah. Definitely true. Like we will need to work, work, work that out or, or have discussion about it, like um, how, how it should look like and, and, and with these things. So like, I completely agree that gating is separate for the, and depends on it's the quite context natural, of like, the product. Yes. Like the, the level one metadata are usually like, for example, if you share test in a single branch in master, but level two metadata are usually branched uh, for specific distros. So you would have uh, uh, the possibility and you want to have like different different configuration for different branches. So like naturally, I would say this, this configs are in different branches, but if, if needed, like to remove some additional uh, duplication even here, I think it would be possible to like introduce this remote references, but not necessary, I think. For, like, Any other questions? Like we are uh, out, out of time, I think it's coffee break or something. But if you want to ask something, yeah, so I, I should just mention like this is the prototype that we have now uh, for uh, GitHub pull request and like we want to add this like also to Fedora CI, the normal one, like a possibility to how to define this in different way. And yeah, uh, we are internally working to moving basically all the, all the legacy stuff and getting rid of it, but we need to do it uh, continuously and slowly because uh, it's a lot of tests that have been yeah, done during 10 years. Thanks very much. <laughs>